welcome to Investments 360 in the hot seat this evening. Craig Pfeiffer, General Manager at Absa Investments. Craig, always a pleasure having you in the studio. Evening, Brian. And you've Evening, come Wayne. with an, an outlook on the economic front, and I see that you are saying that the economic data in the US is not weak enough to warrant QE3. Now, did you write this before the jobs data that had the market up in arms no, of late? No, I think late? the jobs data um, last week was, you know, it's a case of all of the economic data we've seen. There's two steps forward and one step back. And uh, I think we, we've seen a lot of the numbers and we actually think the outlook is probably going to be better than, than we think. We're looking for around 2.5% for the, for the first quarter GDP and I think it could even be a little bit better. But you know, there are other, other numbers, the retail sales today were a bit better than, than the market was expecting. But not all the numbers are going to come out and, and be positive. And there wasn't uh, the much right traction in the consumer confidence number that we saw last week out of the US. So topsy-turvy. Yeah, well, I think on balance though, they, they, they're showing an improving trend and, uh, and it's positive growth. And as I say, I think it's probably even going to do a little better than we think. And when that's pretty much what, yeah. you, what you would no, be look, saying. The US is okay. I mean, there's nothing great going on there, but we're way past any danger level in news. It's not going to plummet back into a double dip recession. So we don't have to worry about the U.S. for the remainder of this year. And maybe one very important factor on the U.S. Now, I might be a little bit early in this, but I think there's every indication that the U.S. consumer has stopped paying back debt. And that is very... It doesn't mean they're going to take on extra loans tomorrow. But when they start this de-gearing thing, that's quite a nice underpin for economic growth in the because US. Because the US consumer makes up 70% yeah. of so, the So the we yeah. don't have to worry about the US this year. And I, I think the point is you really need things to get a lot bleaker than they look at the moment for, for additional quantitative easing. Yeah. A mild recession in Europe. It's not going to get, uh, again, Spain uh, this morning, uh, all over the news, headlines, and of course Asian That's markets lower, worry. exactly, exactly, but still just a mild recession. Yes, in, I say mild India. recession, and I, I think even a quarter ago we said mild recession, and it probably looks a little worse now than, than it did back then, and probably the risks are still to the downside, so it could get a little worse, but uh, we're still looking for it more to be a shallow, you know, maybe three quarters kind of dip before you know, modestly improving in the second half of the year, going, going positive. Nothing again. to worry about. Look, you always got to worry. Uh, I think when you see these headlines, see Spanish yields going up, Italian yields going up, uh, they're not out of the woods by, by you know, a long stretch of the imagination. They're probably going to need some kind of bailout package um, to, to, to get them straight, because it doesn't look like they can do it by themselves. So there's still lots to worry about, but I think put it all together, uh, I think the ECB uh, and, and all of the European countries that are involved have got the political will to stay together and to sort out the problems. Anything on Europe before yeah, look, we I mean, move Europe, on to Europe Japan? Europe was always going to go into a recession. Anyone who didn't think Europe could escape the recession you know, didn't, didn't see the reality of what's happening there. But Germany is still okay. And I mean, Germany and France are the powerhouses there. I'm very interested to see how the French election comes out, whether the socialist president will win, because that might change the... The, the political outlook, if you like to put it that way, in, in France and maybe have an effect on their influence within uh, the, the, the European Union. But what's also interesting is that it appears as though there won't be a European head of the IMF, which is the, generally the, 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 the way things are done. And maybe that, maybe you need an outside, a non-European there to actually have a better look at Europe and maybe can get things right. But we are going to have bad news out of Italy, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Ireland for the remainder of this year. But hopefully that will be countered by better news out of Germany. Right, moving on to Japan. You're saying better than expected traction in Japan. Would that be a fair assumption? Yes, I think if you look at those big economies, um, US, it looks like probably they, they've come to an end of of more monetary policy easing. I think we're going to have a, a loose monetary policy going forward for, for some time to come, but, but no more additional stimulus probably going to come through there. Um, the ECB probably not going to be buying any more assets, you know, and, and maybe in the UK a little bit more asset purchases, but those big economies, those economic areas look to be getting to the end of, of the stimulus that they're going to put in. So maybe not additional stimulus coming there. Japan though is, is looking the other way. They got pretty much zero inflation. Uh, the Bank of Japan, they would like to see, they've got a 1% target. Um, they've, it's been a long time since they've had that kind of inflation. So I think they're going to come and still loosen up policy more, increase liquidity, trying to um, you know, 
still continue to boost the economy, but a lot of this um, traction that we're talking about is really repairing the damage and uh, coming off a very low base of the tsunami. It's a the base earthquake. effect, ex effectively. Yes. So is it sustainable over, over years? I'm not so sure. But I think at least over the next year or so, we're going to see much stronger growth and it will be a big driver of, of growth going forward. Into China and the debate. Hard landing, soft landing has been ongoing. You've been on the side of the soft landing argument for, for some time and you maintain that stance in this economic outlook. Very much so. Those first quarter numbers, 8.1% GDP growth, was disappointing. Um, but I think that's going to be close to the bottom. They've got a 7.5% target, but we've seen over time they've always outperformed their target. So I don't think we should see 7.5% as necessarily having to get there. Um, but, you know, China had a, had a poor January and February. The March numbers have actually, you know, some of their numbers that have come through have been quite positive. Um, so I think around this, this first quarter, second quarter is probably going to be the, the bottom of, of the quarterly economic growth before picking up again in the second half. So we're putting a lot of store on uh, quite a positive second half in the global economy and a lot of these individual economies. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That there Look, is <coughs> positivity to be felt in the second yeah. half? Understand what happened to China was Chinese authorities were worried about inflation, house prices or the housing boom and motor car sales. They thought these were just too high. So they cut back on credit. So they wanted a slowdown. So it's not as though the, the, the Chinese economy is slowing and the government and the central bank <coughs> don't want it to slow. They wanted a slowdown. Now what's happened is inflation has come off, even though in the last month it's picked up a little bit. But let's just say, well, let's hope that that's a blip. It's scary. But it's fallen quite significantly. Housing market seems to have cooled down a little bit. Car sales seem to have cooled down a bit. And as a result of all of this, there's actually the last two months extra credit going into the Chinese economy. So don't worry about China. Maybe the next quarter GDP will also disappoint a little bit, but it will be okay. Now, when you look just outside of China, and this is just an indicator, but the amount of volume gone through Singapore, and I say, as this is the port, this is the biggest port in the world. This is up significantly in the last month. Eh? So, you know, once again, the big risks... I think the risk of Chinese hard landing, I think by and large we've, it's we've over. We, we're over that one. So the big risks still sit in Europe essentially because there's not, yeah. it's not, not to say the US is good, but it's probably okay. I think those Chinese authorities have shown over time, they've maybe sometimes been a little bit slow to react to inflation, but historically they've never been uh, slow to react to low growth or really underestimate the problems in the economy. So uh, I think we're quite comfortable that this is a well engineered, as, as Wayne was saying, soft landing, and we will pick up. They'll, they'll continue to probably uh, cut the reserve requirements, not cut rates just yet, mm -hmm. but I think they're doing all the right things. So we've taken a quick overview of the, the global picture. How does this all tie up for South Africa? Well, I think to really take off, uh, we need a few things to come right, and one of them is really Europe. We need that story to, to work itself out, to get positive growth there, to you know, start buying our goods and services as well. So probably that's some way away. But I think if we look at our local economy, it's, it's still a case of the consumer, the consumption side of the economy that's, that's been, the, been the driver and probably going to be the driver in the next little while still. The production side has been under the cosh, manufacturing, mining, and we're seeing some of these numbers coming through from Harmony, their production down, Anglo Gold, Implats, you name it, most of our miners are struggling. The numbers last week on, on, on mining production down 14.5% year on year. So the production side of the economy has been struggling from strikes, electricity, all those safety issues. Um, a lot of those aren't going to go away anytime soon. So I think the production side is still going to be under a little pressure. Um, and the consumption side to to still prop us up a bit. Uh, investment seems to be picking up a bit, so that, that will add a bit to the mix. Government spending also, you know, adding a bit to, to GDP growth. But, um, but we, yeah, are we need to take it to the next level. But we are still hostage to the international oh, yes. news flow, as you uh, pointed yes. out. I mean, this all depends especially our stock market. on all things being equal. Yeah. Especially our stock market. I mean, our stock market is hostage to what happens overseas. There's very few companies um, who are directly tied to the South African economy in our stock market. Coming back to the inflation environment in South Africa, we've obviously got inflation data mm. out this week. Is there anything to be concerned about? I think there's always risks that, it, 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 that the pressures are, are to the upside. Um, the numbers that are coming out this week um, probably going to be just above the target range too. I think the range is 6, 6, 1, 6, 2, so around, around there. But I think the outlook is still for inflation to pick up maybe to the mid-sixes. 
um, and then taper off into, into 2013. But energy prices, although they've come off a little bit um, now, could be a potential concern. But you do need energy prices to keep going up at the same rates that they have last year. Otherwise, you're not going to get the same rate of inflation. I have to interject there because I can't let you yes. go without chatting to you about a couple of stocks that you think we should be buying at the moment in the South African environment. What would that be? A moment ago, we heard Mark saying that he expects a re-rating in Sassel if the international community really starts to understand the, the stock properly. Where you He's go. a very clever guy. Is he a very clever guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, we, we like Sassel as well, and uh, I think Wayne said as well, we all like Sassel, except all like the international guys have got to like it and, and, and help the re-rating. But I think that's the thing, if we look on the resources side of the market, and I think we've talked about this a lot, and it's, they've looked cheap for some time, and if you look at the valuation box, you can tick that quite easily. Um, so they do look cheap. Um, but the market. Anglo American, you said Anglo American yep. over a two year view. Anglo American, BHP Billiton, Cecil, um, Exaro, these are all names that we like and we would add to portfolios. Um, at current levels, add at current levels. At, at current levels. I still think that in the next little while, the next couple of months, there could still be softness in commodity prices. If we, if we buy into this pick up later in the year in, in global demand and economic activity, that should help pull up um, a lot of the the metals prices, but even if they stayed where they were, um, or even came off a little bit, the market's factoring in commodity prices a whole lot lower than, than where they are at the moment. So I see value in those stocks.